All right, let's see, where to begin today? Well, how about this? I'll just kind of, um, I'll kind of run you through this in the order that things took place. So, my idea for the day was I was going to clear enough space just so that I could work on building or starting to fabricate this guard, this missing guard for the Hindi lathe. So, the idea was clear all the crap that was on top of this pellet burner and slide it right over here and remove a few buckets that were sitting right there and a few other odds and ends pieces of debris. So here's where the story kind of takes a turn. So after doing that, I kind of got a burr up my butt about getting back into the whole organizing thing. And while I know it still looks like a pigsty, and technically it still is a pigsty in here, I've actually made some significant progress, at least in the garage. Now, a bunch of stuff that was in the garage is now in the utility room and the kitchen of the house, waiting to go upstairs into long-term storage. So, I'll just kind of walk you through the few random things that I did before I ran out of steam. Before I could just kind of barely walk through here. And this corner was an absolute disaster area. So I was able to remove a couple of buckets of parts from back here. Um, John Deere 200 series parts. Um, what else? Oh, a uh, circular saw project that I started to tinker with and never got finished. Surprise, surprise. Um, I started taking some of the tools that I had from my business that I don't use anymore and started taking them upstairs. A small tile saw. Um, what else? Tile saw. Oh, my pl bag of plumbing tools. Oh, a couple of little baby drill presses that were sitting over here. And the, the list just goes on and on and on. At any rate, I've gained some space back. And now I just have to do some more organizing to actually make best use of it. This table saw was piled high with stuff. Well, obviously it is again, but stuff that might actually be useful, whereas the other stuff had been sitting for months, if not years. Which brings me to my next point. As I was standing beside that mower deck, thinking to myself, Jesus, this thing's been in here for how many months now? And then it dawned on me, maybe I need to mark projects either with the date that they come into the shop or um, a time limit date, as if I don't fix them or get around to them by such and such date, they go back into storage. So I don't know if I'll actually implement something like that or not. <coughs> Excuse me. But just a thought that might help me out a little bit with my um, hoarding, I guess you could call it. Let's see, what else was on the agenda here? So, oh, here's an interesting thing. Anybody have any idea what this creature is? These look like they're grinding stones but I can't really tell what it was meant to grind. Just some random thing that um, my buddy next door dropped off for me. Thought I would find interesting, which obviously I do, but sure would like to know what the hell it is. Maybe figure out what it was made to, oops, figure out what it was made to mount to here. 
<clears throat> I can't quite... I mean, it almost seems like this thing should be driven by some power piece of power equipment, a motor or something, but it almost, I don't know, it almost looks like whatever it was made to sharpen is rotated to toward or rotated into this. So hard to say. Maybe it's a maybe it's a knife sharpener. I can't I just can't tell. But anyways, I'd be curious as to what somebody might figure out what this thing is. And here's a little bit of a crude update on my knobs. Where I put the JB Weld on them, they, they look pretty decent. Not that it shows up in this lighting with this camera. But in my attempt to very crudely and quickly get some paint on them, I just dipped them in the paint. And you now you can see how well that turned out on the top there. But otherwise, they, they look halfway decent beyond that. And let's see here. I save tractors finally. Well, not finally, I should say. I. It's only been a little over a week or so. So I've got my seals for the John Deere 300. Hopefully I will be putting that back, to back together in the next few days, depending on the weather and whatnot. And I got a nice sticker from Norm, or whomever sent the, the stickers out. So I'm pretty happy to have that order. Had a strange debacle with FedEx on a set of rotors and brake pads for the probe. They were supposed to show up, I believe it was Friday last week. The FedEx guy stops on the road outside the house, never gets out the truck, drives on, and all of a sudden my order is, or the the tracking on my order is like, oh, we don't know what the hell's going on. So they finally updated the tracking. I think it was last night. Uh, those parts are supposed to come Wednesday. I don't know what happened there, but I wish I could figure out the story. It might make for an interesting one, but let's see. What else is on the list here? Oh, so again, my buddy next door put me on to a big Warner Swayze turn turret lathe that I almost bought which well based on the garage I don't need another lathe but somebody beat me to it anyways so not really an issue um so one of the things uh this is um this was frustrating to beat all hell normally I'm a reasonably proficient mechanic However, in the process of putting this 212 together and the 210 that's sitting outside, I got the assembly order goofed up so many times. It probably, probably three or four different times I got the assembly order goofed up on these machines and had to backtrack. It was just uh, one of those frustrating days. I know, you know, anybody that tinkers... You have those days, but fortunately, that's kind of a rare exception for me. <clears throat> One of the issues or boggles I had was getting this um, mounting plate on. I dropped the engine into the frame without this mounting plate and without this set of tensioner pulleys attached underneath here and I had a hell of a time getting the two pieces back on the motor after the fact so lesson learned and the um, <clears throat> it was what was it transmission or um, drive belt related issues I was having on the 210 getting those sorts of things out of order but at any rate Got it together, got it moving, just got to fix the charging problem on it. So in the process of messing around last night, or no, I don't, well, one of these nights, <clears throat> I stumbled onto this. I've had this laying around in the garage for some time. 
and I figured this would be a good receptacle set for this generator. <clears throat> so I will probably pop a, well, I guess I've already got a hole popped into it. So we'll see if that, if that hole will work out, maybe I will just go ahead and use it and mount, bring up a mount of some sort on here and call it a day on the receptacles for this thing. Also thought about it, <clears throat> somewhere around here I've got a belt guard that came off of the first Cochrane Bly mill. If the size works out, I might try to get it rigged up to at least cover this in because this thing could be wind up, wound up used out in the middle of winter when it's slippery and everything else and is going on with all kinds of chaos. So I could somehow see myself accidentally slipping and getting a pant leg or something caught in there. So might be one of the very few times I actually try to rig up a little bit of a safety device. <clears throat> and almost the last thing on my list is I've got a few snowblower mods to try and do before the snow actually comes. Um, one of the things, as I can recall, is, sorry about the light, it kind of sucks in the circumstances. Anyways, there's a, a large, I think it's like 34 tooth sprocket underneath of this cover. One of the things people do to increase the efficiency of these things is they put on, I think it's a 30 tooth sprocket just to speed it up just a little bit, speed up the main, the rotor, or auger, I should say. So that's one thing that hopefully I'll get around to messing with over the winter. Other thing is, I don't know if you can see it or not. <clears throat> that right there, since this is a single stage snowblower, the clearance between that and the, uh, Bat, the sheet metal, the chute, discharge chute, is kind of a critical thing as far as getting snow to actually exit this thing with enough velocity to go anywhere. So one of the other modifications, people will put a thick piece of rubber on those to get a little more oomph on the snow. So that'll be an easy one. That'll probably be one of the first ones to get done. The other thing is I might test out my hammering skills, see about getting a piece of another piece of steel from the hood of the other car, one of the cars. One of the things people do is replace the discharge chute with one that has a much greater, much taller curvature. And that apparently helps also by a significant amount. But trying to get that kind of compound curve beat into a semi-thick piece of steel is not always fun nor easy. But at any rate, we'll see how that turns out. This is the engine that those seals go on. And let's see. Oh, one last thing I was thinking about. I keep watching all these Russian videos, all these Russian machinist videos. I can't make heads or tails out of most of what they're saying. Actually, I can't make heads or tails out of anything they're saying. But, geez, they really have all kinds of ingenuity. I, I'm just, I'm amazed at the things that they make with, sometimes with machine tools, sometimes with not much more than a grinder and a welder. I was just kind of curious as to whether or not any of you guys also watch any of those um, Russian videos. Unfortunately, I can't, I can't even link you to hardly any of them because I can't spell the first one of their names, so when it'd be kind of fruitless to try it, but... Anyways, I've pretty well rambled on long enough. I'll real quickly I'll walk into the house here and show you just how much garbage I've drug out of the garage and will be taking upstairs. So 
So, lots and lots of stuff. Things that haven't been used for a long time, been sitting on shelves, extra tools, my pulley collection, gearboxes. I mean, you name it, it's going upstairs. Extra part, well not extra parts for the Logan lathe, but parts I haven't reassembled yet. John Deere 200 series parts. Yada yada yada. Set of roofing coil nails. Ugh. And in here, I even decided since that engine is light enough, I would take it on upstairs. I got the gas drained out of it. An old milling cross slide cheapo thingy from Harbor Freight that I haven't used since I got the mill. More John Deere parts. And some come alongs that just keep getting chased around the garage. So, at any rate, I think I will let you guys go since I'm sure I bored you plenty well to tears at this point.